If you look at this, you know, their inspiration comes from, right here it says mind. A mass-like quality at the center of the mark suggests a face. So, I mean, if you look at this, you see, like, you know, the eyes and the mouth. It's not exactly a face, but you can see where that inspiration comes from. And also the black and white quality from this here in the symbol. So that's one thing. Also the body. The mark suggests an abstract human torso with outstretched arms similar and opposed to da Vinci's drawing of the Vitruvius man. So if you look at this image, let me blow this up. It's better. All right. So if you look at this, um, you see the similarities between this form right here and this right here. Okay? And then the heart says the open channels are similar to the route All right, the open channels are similar to the route that blood flows through the heart. So they're, used, they're describing these shapes as sort of vessels and the reason why all of this comes together is because if you think about the sport of football it's very much based upon uh, the mind, the body and the heart um, it's about strength it's about power but it's also about using your mind to outthink somebody it's using the strength and um, solidarity from the body and also having heart, having this thing that's, that's moving, that's pumping, that's, uh, you start to see how they pick a typeface to use for some of their, uh, to communicate this particular brand. So we're going on the typography here in color. You see that they chose this typeface right here, which is called headline typeface, and then display uh, typeface. So these two typefaces they're using, but they're also using DIN bold, DIN medium, and DIN light, which are all different typefaces that are predicated on this system to work with that. So as you start to see this, these are some of the things that, um, moving through this, some of the things I wanted you guys to really take note of was how this gets used. So remember that symbol that we have, it gets, it's placed on here. Now you still have the primary mark that's on the actual shirt. But you also have this as sort of a, um, sort of a sub-brand, a part of this. But this shirt is a Nike Pro shirt. This is the main brand. This is the brand that goes under this Nike brand. So we look at this as well down here. You see this bag is a Nike bag, and then the brand under Nike is this Nike Pro. Alright, so as we start to look at this even more detail, we see the brand here, okay? Now this is a seasonal mark, but you can see how they use the logo here, and then they have the main logo there. And here as well. This brand, this shirt is branded here, and the center is also on the arm, too. But the Nike logo is still here. Now, looking at this, this is another example of how they're using the symbol in the background as a texture. Okay? And then it's also here as well. So these are just examples of some of the photography that they chose for this program.
아버지가 그거하는 담배 이제 도시 Let's let's go getting back to uh where we were. Um I'm going to blow these up so you guys can So you know, when you start to look at an entire branding system, um, and these these renderings are amazing, actually. Um, it shows you how the showroom is going to look. Now, obviously, the showroom is a Nike showroom, but this Nike showroom is predicated <coughs> on that Nike Pro brand that we've been talking about and looking at. So these are other ways in which they've used that branding system to communicate an environment. Well, let's just kind of go through this. Look at these things right here. It's kind of cool. And then there's packaging. So uh, I don't know. Does anybody? I don't know if anybody has any packaging in this class. I don't think so. But um, I think this is just. We won't spend a lot of time on this. This is just another way of looking how you know this brand is used onto other elements. And this is a, again a Nike Pro. Um. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna try to speed through some of these because this is getting a little long, and I need to spend some time with you and take a break. Um. <coughs> so this is Nike Free Visual Center. So, um, look at this. So, one of the notes they have on here is Nike Free. Logo type remains consistent from existing Visual Center. So, you know, Nike Free, Run Free. Same thing. Okay, they've defined a certain color palette and a way to use that color. So, here is the color palette down here. Here is how they, they see, they envision that color palette being used. These are all the different product line and what the product looks like. This is what they've defined as the typography. Now, um, They've used this uh, plus symbol signifies positive effect of free. Okay, smooth line, smooth curves follow human form and mirror the product's flexibility. So, let me go back real quick. So, if you look at what they have going on here, you know the shape of this shoe right here, and then you go to here and it still has that similar shape okay and then vice versa and then together it makes a plus sign so here again remember what I told you guys when you put together your logo type with your logo make sure that you have some sort of understanding of space okay So this is just taking a look at how that particular logo, remember we saw Nike Free, Run Free? So they're using Run Free here, Nike Free here, and then they're using that color palette and that color system, and then they're using also the shoe to go along with that. So if you start to look at all of these things together, even this right here, it all fits under the same brand. And these are just more examples of it. Mm. 
more examples. You notice how everything stays the same. Even though they're different on each one of these, they all have that same quality. It's branding. That's how branding works. Because even if, you, even if you're doing something different within this space, because it's enclosed in this color, because it's using this type, because it's using this product, and it has this fade behind it like this, this gradient, then you just automatically associate this with this particular brand, which is Run Free, Nike Free. It's this. Everything's there. And you can see all the various different ways. Even when you go to different colors, it still stays the same. Different applications. Alright, so in this one, they're using the this symbol to work with this. They don't use it on all of it. So if you go back to some of the other previous examples of this, like for this example, they don't use that symbol because it's not the primary. This Nike Free, Run Free is the primary. Run Free, Nike Free. And I assume probably that Nike Free is the, it's the most important one because it has a name in there. Okay. So um, I'm going to flip through this one quick. Um, um, this is uh, a brand graphic I got from uh, the University of Louisville. And uh, through this, you kind of see some of the thinking that goes behind uh, branding, you know, a big institution like a school. Um, I did, a, um, I did a, a, the logo for the St. Mary's College. I don't know if you guys know the Gales, but um, it's a lot of work because the logo gets used on so much. I mean, it's almost like Nike. It gets used on so many different things, and there's so many different departments in the school that use it that you really have to be able to be clear on how you want the logo to be used in the brand. So, uh, if you look at this, this one in particular, they, the, the designer who did this um, used a U of L as sort of a, a secondary mark for, for some of their materials. I don't like it too much though, but... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but you see how they've done it in, in, you know, it's one color here, one color here, two colors here. And this one is just grayscale, black and white. Same there. <laughs> 